Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're going to go over the exam guide for the AI associate exam, certification exam that Salesforce has put out. Now they put this out last year and I thought I created this video kind of breaking down the certification and what you need to do, but apparently I did not. So let's go ahead and do that today. I'll give you some of my tips and my pointers as far as this goes. So the AI associate is very term heavy as with most associate exams rather than the full-blown certification exams. Associates are going to focus heavily on terms and concepts rather than how do you actually use this software. So if you don't know how to use Salesforce's AI tools, that is fine. It'll help you to know them and kind of be familiar with them, but it is not crucial for this exam. However, the AI specialist that Salesforce just announced that will be released here on September 9th, that one is going to be more focused on how do you use the AI tools that Salesforce has put out. Now, there aren't very many AI tools that Salesforce has put out, so I feel like that certification is probably going to be fairly repetitive, but that's a totally different certification. So, Let's go ahead and jump into the AI associate. This is just saying, hey, this is just discussing the fundamentals of AI. Uh, the audience description, hey, you know, want to know the AI basics of the different pieces of AI, like language models, machine learning, analytics, how to use trusted AI principles, um, which is just going to be just a bunch of vocabulary and you just need to uh, essentially put it all together. You want to talk about data quality. This will go a little bit into how to have best data within Salesforce and how to create the best data and data governance, which talks about just how to clean your data, uh, what tools within Salesforce mainly duplicate rules and matching rules and how to get those together, as well as how to discuss with stakeholders how AI can be used to improve their business in different scenarios. It's pretty straightforward. If you have any like business experience or any experience working with higher level leadership, then it might take you a little time to think through the question, but it should be fairly easy. And then it goes through what a candidate for the certification is not expected to know how to know a, how AI models integrate within Salesforce workflows, AI compliance requirements, I know how to tailor AI models and predictions. You just need to know what predictions and models are. It also states that you don't have to have experience configuring or developing these Salesforce products. So like I said, very vocabulary heavy. It will help you to have worked with these models once or twice, and there are trailhead modules on that. I should also mention, I'm really bad at mentioning this, but I do have uh, a certification course on this exam. It is not very long because the certification is very repetitive. Uh, you can find that on Salesforce AppSkill, which will be down in the description down below, or it is also available on Udemy Business if you have a Udemy Business subscription through your company or through library or whatever, what have you, that's available there as well. So about this exam, uh, it's going to be 40 multiple choice questions. You'll have an hour and 10 minutes to complete, which is completely doable with a passing score of 65%. So that, I think that means like you need to get 25 correct. Someone can correct me on the math, but you can get up to like 15 wrong. I would say try and only get 10 wrong to uh, feel like you have a good buffer zone. Uh, the cost is $75 USD. I'm not sure what that would be in other places. Please check on Trailhead and see how much it would cost. You can also check on Web Assessor. Web Assessor is how you take those proctored exams online. Personally, I really like taking them online from the comfort of my own home, but it can be pretty tricky if you have other circumstances in your life that make it not so. Uh, we've got two small children, and so it is really difficult to take certification exams with two small children in the house, but we make it work. The retake fee is free, so you take it once, and then if you fail it, then every time you take it, it's free. You can take up to three attempts per release of Salesforce. So let's say you have a spring release, you have a summer, and you have a winter release. You could take it up to nine times in one year. 
anyone who's taken my course, I don't think I've heard of any one person failing after completing our full course. So it's, it's a fairly simple exam once you understand the concepts. There are no prerequisites, no hard copy or online materials. You can take it on site or at a testing center. All right, and then it gives you some recommended training and resources. You have a trail mix, you have a module, which just kind of covers what I'm covering in this exam or in this exam overview. And then you have the recommended certification to get is the certified associate, which I also have a course on. You can check that out in the description. You could also take a Trailhead Academy course. I will say those are extremely expensive and I would only take those for a certification that doesn't have great resources. Uh, those are thousands upon thousands of dollars and you can find a lot of really awesome, cheap, free resources online for this exam. So I would sparingly use those. All right, let's go into the exam outline. So there's four sections on this exam. The AI fundamentals, AI capabilities and CRM, the ethical considerations of AI and data for AI. You can pass with just the ethical considerations and the data for AI, but any other questions that you mark correctly in the AI capabilities in CRM and the AI fundamentals, those will help increase your chances of passing. I also noticed on the exam, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of crossover between ethical considerations and fundamentals and capabilities in CRM. Data is kind of in its own thing, but again, lots of crossover between them those three. And so if you are able to answer a question correctly in one, you'll be able to answer a question correctly in another because you've learned the baseline concepts. So let's jump into AI fundamentals, uh, understand the basic principles and, and applications within Salesforce. So understanding that you can use a prompt builder and you can use some predictive models within that. You can differentiate between the types of AI and their capabilities. So there's uh, generative AI and predictive AI, and understanding what the two differences are between those. Let's just rattle them off here. Generative AI is something that helps you generate text or generate something like ChatGPT is a generative type of AI, and predictive is going to be taking different pieces of data and different models and helping you predict an outcome based upon the different pieces of information that you input very similar to how your brain works of if it is cloudy and I live in a coastal state or a coastal city, then it will probably rain or it will at least have some type of overcast where rain is on and off. I know that there's a lot more data that goes into weather prediction, but that is kind of how AI predictive models work is it takes all the different scenarios. It's trained based upon models and pieces of data in the past to help you predict what's going to happen in the future. Weather happens to be one of those things. All right, let's go into AI capabilities in the CRM. So identify CRM capabilities. Describe the benefits of AI as you apply them to CRM. Those are pretty straightforward. Um, it's gonna talk about, hey, do you wanna use predictive or generative in this? And what possible tool can I use to help in this specific business scenario that relates to my CRM? doesn't necessarily go too far into the different pieces of capabilities that Salesforce has within it, like using your predictive models and using a prompt builder, but it goes into the generalities. Let's go ahead and go into ethical considerations. So ethical considerations, this one's also pretty straightforward. You're going to learn a bunch of different concepts and a bunch of different words essentially, um, different vocabulary words as far as ethics go, and then you're going to apply those to business scenarios that have to do with AI. You can also apply Salesforce's trusted AI principles to given scenarios. Essentially, you're just going to read a bunch of business scenarios and you're going to say, hey, this applies to this one of Salesforce's trusted AI principles, or this is going to apply to this one, or it could be two of these guys, or it could be there. Again, it's, it's pretty much a vocabulary and you're matching it up. So let's go ahead and move on to data for A. This is when it gets a little bit more fun. You're going to talk about the importance of data quality and the different components and elements of data quality. This is where it actually goes into how to use Salesforce a tiny bit with how to keep your data clean. 
Um, which if you have taken the admin exam, if you have taken the associate exam and you're familiar with a few of the tools that help you with your data quality, like duplicate and matching roles, like the data loader, like the data import wizard, um, those types of things, then this should be fairly easy once you understand some of the buzzwords, the keywords that Salesforce wants you to know as far as data or AI. Uh, data quality, keeping your data clean, super important. Again, you're going to get a business scenario here and then you're going to say, hey, this applies to this specific part of data quality. But that's going to be the last section. I will again mention that our course, we've helped almost 10,000 people get this certification. I have not once heard of someone who has completed the full course not passing. So hopefully that helps ease your mind a little bit. This certification um, is pretty easy as far as Salesforce certifications go. Let's go over the exam code of conduct. Don't give out answers. Don't give out solutions. So if you talk to us and you send us a message about, hey, what's the answer to this question? I will not give you an answer. I will be forfeiting my certification and you could be fitting, forfeiting your certification by reporting those. You could also possibly be suspended from being able to take proctored exams in the future. You might not be able to get any certifications um, and you will get your certifications removed. That's pretty much it. Maintaining the certification. Currently, there are no certification maintenance requirements for this certification. However, um, that could change in the future. So be sure to be following Salesforce on that. Sometimes I will post about maintenance coming up, but I am not too good at that. So just make sure that you are checking back once or twice a year, maybe set a date in your phone to go and look at those certification maintenance modules so that you can do those in the future to not lose your certifications. Those are not fun. Fun fact, I had a coworker once who lost five certifications. He had seven total, but lost five because he forgot to do the maintenance and I feel so bad for him. Um, so make sure that you have those. Luckily, he had experience on his resume that kind of counted towards those certification numbers, but to make sure that you don't have to go back and do those, just make sure that you're maintaining your certifications. I know I have one out and it gives me a lot of anxiety. Anywho, that is going to be it as far as going over this exam. It is fairly easy. I have had a lot of people who are able to study for it and take it and pass it within the same day, which is super great to be like, hey, I want to take this today, learn about it and pass. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can check out the courses in the description down below or on Salesforce Upscale. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thanks so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.